In this tutorial, we're going to use Rail Clone in conjunction with the V-Ray Distance Texture to create several different types of road markings, including a solid single line, a dashed single line, a double solid line, a double dashed line, a dashed and solid line, and its opposite, a solid and dashed line. We'll also create a style that can fill in areas and maintain a lined outline. The majority of this tutorial can be done with the free version of Rail Clone, and if you just want to use the finished style and aren't interested in learning how it was created, you can simply download it from our website and just follow the section explaining how to set up the materials. We'll start from a blank scene and add a simple plane with a width and a length of about 15 meters. To create the markings, we'll just use a box with a length of about 10 centimeters, a height of 10 centimeters, and a width of one meter. With that done, we'll create a spline and then add a rail clone object. Open the style editor. We're going to add a linear array and a spline. Wire the spline to the generator and then add a segment. Use the segment to pick the box from the scene and wire it to the default input. Pick the spline from the scene and you should have your initial line. Now since we're going to use this with a V-Ray distance texture, it needs to intersect the ground. At the moment you can see it's above it. So we'll change the alignment on the z-axis to center so that it interpenetrates top and bottom. We're going to take a few things throughout this tutorial just to make editing this style further down the line a little bit easier. So we're going to export and expose a number of different parameters to the modify panel so that users can easily edit this particular style without ever needing to open and understand this graph. So to do that we'll right click on the node and go to the export parameters settings. You can then pick the parameters, in this case I'm going to go for the X and Y fixed size and just click OK. Wire these to a numeric node and they'll be exposed in the modify rollout. I'm wiring one to the X fixed size, I'm going to call it solid length. Now add another numeric node and call it line width. You can change the type of numbers for both of these to scene units. So this gives us our basic line. So far it's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to change the mode here to adaptive so that segments aren't sliced unnecessarily and I'm going to turn on cap holes which we'll need in order for the V-Ray distance texture to recognize when the surface is inside a piece of geometry. If we render this now we can see well we've got something pretty uninspiring a simple red box that follows the spline. So what we now need to do is set up the materials. I'm going to take a base material from Chaos Cosmos. I'm going to use the asphalt black cracked material. Just import that into the scene. Assign that to the surface and then turn off the preview of the maps in the viewport. Doesn't really help in this case. What we're going to do is to modify the diffuse input. So I'm going to keep the existing map. I'm going to add a comp composite map. Wire the existing diffuse texture to the first layer and then wire the composite map to the diffuse input. Now I'm going to add two more layers. This is to demonstrate that you could use this to add multiple different colors of lines. So we're going to add one layer for white markers and one layer for yellow. In the second layer, add a V-Ray color map, change the color to an off-white. Click OK. For the mask, add a V-Ray distance texture. Now, in order to generate this mask, we want to use the rail clone object. So we'll go to the V-Ray texture objects, click on add and pick the rail clone object. Because it's going to be a mask, we want to swap the colors around. We want the far color to be black and the near color to be white. So we'll just swap those. And then I'm going to make inside separate and solid and I'm going to make the inside color white too. That'll create a white mask only underneath the rail clone object. You can reduce the distance a bit too so it's not uh, too subtle of a fall off. If we render it then well we can't really see anything because the rail clone geometry is still in the way. We need to right click on that, go to object properties and turn off renderable. And now render again and we've got a white line but it's not very convincing. So the first thing we want to do is to rough up those edges a little bit as though they've been painted on with a roller or sprayed. We can do that by adding a noise map to the distance texture slot input. Set the mode to fractal, reduce the size significantly to, to about one, 
and increase the contrast by setting the high value to 0.6 and the low value to 0.4. With that done, you should find you've got a much more convincing edge, but it's still not blending with the underlying texture very well. So in order to do that, we can mix it a little bit with one of the existing maps. In this case, I'm going to use the reflection gloss map. And if you view this image, it's got lots of nice detail that we can use to blend. To blend them together, I'm going to add a V-Ray composite map after the V-Ray distance texture and change the mode to multiply. Wire the gloss map into the second input and wire the whole lot into the mask in the composite map. If you render it now, well, it's going to be pretty uninspiring. It's just going to go to a sort of mid-gray. So what we want to do is to increase the contrast in that glossiness map. And I'm going to do that using an output map, which gives me a lot of control. So I'm just going to wire this in between the gloss and the comp map and enable the color map. Add two points. Set the first point's value to zero, so it flattens the curve at the start. And I'm going to add the second point value to 1 so that it flattens the curve at the end. Change the move so it just moves horizontally and close up the gap to increase the contrast. If you render now you should see the underlying texture cuts through on those various dips and cracks which works much much better. So the way this curve works is that the further to the right that we move these two points the more of the underlying texture we see, and the more we move it over to the left, the more of the line texture we get through. So you really want to move that depending on how aged you want these lines to look. Here's looking pretty well for me. That pretty much sets the material up, except that we want to do the same thing, but for a yellow color. So just to illustrate this, I'll clone the rail clone object and just open up the material editor again. And let's take the existing um, composite map and distance texture and clone them. Wire those to the mask for the second layer. Clone the V-Ray color map and change the color to an off yellow. Wire that to layer two. And now all we need to do is to take the new V-Ray distance texture delete the current object and add any new ones that you want to create a yellow color. And of course you can do this with anything. It doesn't have to be a rail clone object. Any geometry you wire into these two V-Ray distance textures will create white or yellow geometry depending on which ones you add them to. And that gives us our initial solid line. If you only want to use the existing style, you can just download it from our website. But Watch on if you want to see how you can create a flexible rail clone style with lots of numeric values that you can adjust in the modify panel plus drop down lists. Okay, so we're going to turn this into a dashed line now. So we'll add a transform node and export the padding for the left and the right. Add a numeric node, give it a name, something like space length, and change the uh, type to scene units, wire it to the left and right input. Now you can adjust this using this value here, but it won't work. It's a common mistake. In transform nodes, you need to remember to turn on the checkbox that overrides these settings. I need to turn on override padding in order to see the results. There we can see that's working nicely. Now you notice down in this corner here, we've got a gap and that might be what you want. But if you did want to add geometry to the corner instead of having a gap in the corner, you can easily do that just by taking the geometry and wiring to the corner input. You'll then need to go to the rules tab and turn on bevel corner. To close up the gap, increase the bevel corner offset. I'm going for 50%. And one final thing to note is that of course the space length is actually double what I'm entering in the uh, modify panel because it's being used on the left and the right of the segment. So technically I should halve it. In order to do that, you can go to the macros tab, go to the arithmetic section and use divide by n. And make sure that divisor is set to 2 to divide it by 2 and wire that macro into the left and right input. And that gives us our dashed line. So now what we want to do is to create a double line. And in order to do that, we need to use a compose operator to use this same segment twice. Wire this to, to the compose operator two times and then wire the compose operator to the generator. 
Because we want to manipulate these segments, we'll add a transform node. And actually we need to add transform node twice because it's going to have different settings each time it's used. So we've got two transform nodes. I'm going to go to the transform settings and you can see that if I change the Y translation property for these, then I can offset it to either side, which is what we're going to want to do. But they're kind of sequencing at the moment and we want them to be alongside one another. So we just change the mode to grouped for the compose operator that gives us the right effect now of course we don't want to have to come into the graph to change the spacing between these lines so we'll export the properties and add another numeric node so this time we're going to export fixed transform fixed translation y for both nodes then we're going to add a new numeric node give it a name, and change the mode to scene units. We call it double line spacing. Now if we wire these together, we should be able to adjust the offset from the modify panel, but there'll be a catch. When I change this property, nothing will happen. That's because both transform nodes are getting the same value, so the lines are staying completely on top of one another. We need one of those pieces of geometry to get the opposite value, the negative value. And once again, we can do that quite easily by using the negate value macro, which basically has the effect of multiplying whatever's wired to it by negative one. And now you can see with that in place, we can easily adjust the width between those lines by controlling that property. And that gives us our double line marking. So what if we want a double dashed line? We can do that quite easily by combining some of the nodes we've already created. We've already got a transform node here that creates dashed line, so we'll just copy and paste that, wire the new double compose operator into it, and then connect them to the generator. And there we go, that creates our double dashed line. So what if we want to combine those two so we've got a dashed line and a solid line? In order to do that, we'll copy and paste the existing compose node with both of its transform operators, wire it to the generator, and then select one of those transform nodes, it doesn't matter which, and export the X fixed size. We're going to take an arithmetic node, leave it on the default, which is addition, and then take the length of the solid and the length of the gap, and then add them together and wire that to the X fixed size of one of those inputs. And you'll see that creates an effect where we have a dashed and a solid double line. And you can control the size of the solid part and the spacing separately. What if we want the opposite of that? Instead of dash solid, we want solid dashed. That's very easy to do. We can just take a mirror operator, wire the mirror to the generator, and then wire the compose operator we just created to the mirror's input, and then change the axis to Y. And that reverses that pattern. So now we've got six different line options here, but in order to access them, you're going to have to change the wiring in the graph. What we want is an easy way to switch between them and you can do that using a selector operator. So we'll add that to the graph and then we'll wire into the first input the solid, in the second input the dashed line, in the third input we'll wire the double line, in the fourth input the double dashed line and then moving down we're going to do a solid dashed and then the opposite of that and then we'll replace that in the generator. What you can do now by changing this index property here is you can easily switch between those different line styles. But still changing that index property means you have to open the graph. But then the numbers 1 to 6 don't really help the user to understand what those settings are going to do. So instead we can use a new parameter style, new to RailClone 5, which allows you to add a drop down list to the parameters rollout. You do that by exporting the index property adding a new numeric node and wiring it to the index input. Then you give it a name and go down to the numeric node type and change it to selector. Click on edit. This will open an interface where you can add your list. So all you do is basically add a new item, give it a name and give it a value. So here I've added solid on one, dashed on two, double on three, double dashed on four, dashed solid on 5 and solid dashed on 6. 
those are going to give you a much clearer indication of what those settings do than just having the numbers. And you can see here now with the style editor closed I can use this drop down list on the right hand side in the parameters rollout to quickly change between those different styles. Finally we'll create a version of this style whereby if it's applied to a closed spline it fills with lines. So we'll just create a rectangle for now, come back to the style editor, assign the spline and then add a new 2D array. Wire the same spline to the clipping area input of the 2D array. Come into its settings and change the mode to extend XY size to area. This will automatically fill the area. For the geometry, we'll wire a transform node into the Y evenly input, and that's because we want to modify the size of this segment we've already used. As you can see, it's very thin. It needs to be wider. So we'll export the properties, go to fix size Y, and click OK. And we can add some new parameters for this, so we can control it from the modify panel. So I'll add a numeric node, change the type to scene units, call it fill width, and wire it to the Y fixed size input. Make sure you turn on override fixed size, don't forget, and then you can control the size of this fill directly from down in the modify panel. Like so. How do we control the spacing between them? Well, this is wired to an evenly input, so of course we control it using the Y evenly distance settings. But again, we have to do this from the graph, so let's export it using export parameters, Y evenly distance, create a numeric node, wire it to the newly exposed property, and give it a name. In this case, fill spacing. You can now use that property to control the distance between the lines in the fill pattern. So there are other useful properties we could export here. For example, what if we wanted to rotate this fill? Well, you can do that by going to the clipping area input and using the Z rotation property. For example, here it was at 45 degrees. Let's access that from the parameters rollout by going to export properties, clipping, Z rotation, and adding another numeric node. Giving it a name like fill rotation, and then changing the type in this case to float. Now you can see we can control this value directly from the modify panel. So there's a little bit of an issue with this, adding the fill. As you can see, the double lines are overlapping the fill. Um, that's because they're centered on the spline. So what we want to do is to be able to control the Y offset to pull them out to one side or the other. This will also be useful if they're around the edges of sidewalks. So we can do that by exporting the Y offset property, adding another numeric node, and then wiring it to the new input. Give it a name like line offset, and change the type to scene units. Now you can control that outside of the graph as well. There we go. Another little issue I'm spotting here is that although the fill is halfway through the base, the lines around the edge aren't, and that's because when we added them to a compose operator, it reset our alignment. So we'll just put that back by adding a transform node after the selector and turning on override alignment and setting Z to center again. And that fixes the style. If we render now, we can see our original outline around the edge plus the fill working nicely with the V-Ray distance texture. This completes our style. It's highly configurable without having to understand and use the graph editor. You can now apply it to your city scene or use it in any other project where you need flexible parametric road markings. If you're a Corona user, or you prefer another engine, then the same approach should work with any renderer that has a distance texture map. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future instalments.